Cold atom physics is a relatively new and rapidly developing field of research. Each year we hold a summer school to teach PhD students about the subject and about the latest developments in the field. This is a great opportunity for the students to learn about the field of cold atoms to present their own research and to meet other students and academics from all over the world. There are actually many aspects to cold atom physics and the students at the Murak Summer School learn about them from directly from the premier researchers in their, their respective fields. These include, of course, experimental as well as theoretical physicists. So I'm a theoretical physicist and there's essentially two types of theorists. The theorist that does a lot of maths, a lot of equations, a lot of work with pen and paper. And then there's the theorist who does a lot of large computer models, lots of large simulations. And I'm essentially the second type. Um, now, the way that I try and um, interact with experimentalists can happen in one of two ways. Either an experimentalist can do an experiment and he doesn't understand the results he's obtained, and then I might do some theoretical modeling to try and understand that experiment. And in that case, the experiment is leading the theory. Or, on the other hand, I might uh, do some theory, I might predict a nice effect, and then I might uh, encourage an experimentalist to go away and test my theory. So in this uh, second case, the theory would be leading the experiment. There are many areas of experimental work in cold atom physics. One of the newest developments is to interlink light and ultra-cold atoms quantum mechanically uh, using so-called quantum optics. I run uh, with my small group uh, a BC experiment where we study um, the properties of uh, Bose-Einstein condensates, especially how do they interact with light. Um, so and this is the main direction uh, my research, understanding the interaction between matter and light, especially between atoms and light, so well that you can really isolate what are the quantum features of photons uh, and atoms, and how, once you understand them, how can you possibly use them for something useful in quantum information science. There is also considerable interest in miniaturizing these ultra-cold atom systems in order to be able to manipulate them on microchips. I'm working on cold atoms, in particular how such atoms interface with solid-state devices, things like semiconductor devices I'm particularly interested in. The basic idea behind the chip is that uh, we try to miniaturize and integrate the different techniques to manipulate atoms and manipulate the quantum physics of atomic systems, thereby following the same way now for quantum optics and, and atomic systems like was done in the last century for electronics where uh, out of single components we learned how to build integrated chips. Also, experiments on highly excited atoms, so-called Rydberg gases, are uncovering new long-range physics in ultra-cold atoms. Putting them to really highly excited states, you can enlarge the size of an atom to the physical size of a hair. And this means that this atom behaves, of course, quite different than a classical atom. Mm -hmm. And a completely new physics appears. And of course, it gets now really interesting if you embed one of these really large atoms into an ultra-cold gas, and look at the interactions between the atoms with this huge ball of a highly excited Rydberg atom and the cold atoms around, mm -hmm. which is a new field of physics uh, to look at ultra-cold atoms. Experimentalists in the field are working towards having complete control over all quantum mechanical degrees of freedom of the ultra-cold atom systems. So, uh, I have over the past 10-15 uh, years gotten interested in this, uh, this, this uh, problem. Uh, that is, how do we take some quantum system? Usually, not, we are not we're interested in something that's a, a bit more complex than just a particle moving in a straight line. Yeah. But how how can you take a quantum mechanical system, and how can you really, uh, in some systematic way, come up with some protocols for making it do what you want, and not just making it do what you want, but also make it do what you want in the presence of real world imperfections and errors and things like that. 
These are just some of the research areas that are uncovering new physics and new technologies in the area of quantum physics. So I think using cold atoms uh, for doing new physics uh, is a quite smart thing because they are very simple devices, as you want to say. Mm -hmm. Typically you have an atom, you only talk to one of these electrons, something which is well controlled. And then, having a well-controlled system, but a quantum system, you can bring together different quantum systems to make more complex systems, to build up something which is really complex, but still, since the single units are quite simple, you can control everything and you can learn new things from these combined systems and you can try, for example, to simulate uh, normal devices you have here, like wood yeah. <laughs> or glass or steel or metal, uh, to understand how how they work uh, on the basis of this simple quantum system which you use as a simulator. I would not be surprised that within the next 10 years you see a few of the fundamental theories and fundamental properties of matter being either confirmed or uh, shown that the descriptions are not correct because of experiments that are done of simulating the systems with, with, with ultra cold atoms. Yeah, I mean, I think the future is enormous for this field, partly because the type of atoms that you've got, then that you can cool, is increasing. There's a great deal of control over how those atoms interact, over how you trap them. Um, you can change the spin of those atoms, and that creates all sorts of different scenarios. So there's a vast sea of, of physics to explore there. Exploring the limits of what's possible is always exciting. You always discover new things that are completely unexpected. Each year we aim to inform and enthuse the next generation of young physicists to carry on this work into the future.